we're all here. We're, we're, we're almost all here. There is one person missing from the roster of co-hosts. We have to shame him publicly. Well, I don't know. Uh, for those of you who came here to see Kobe in person, he is not here, actually. He remains the elusive Kobe. Um, we're sad that he's actually not here with us today. He will be hopefully here on a panel like this in the future. But I am lucky to have three of my regular co-hosts with me. Uh, you, I, I guess if you listen to the show, I don't... Wait, how many people actually listen to the podcast regularly? Raise your hand. Ooh. Okay, well. cool. Just check. <laughs> good background. Yeah. What was it? About like okay. 60, 70%? Yeah, it, was, it was pretty okay. good. Um, but why don't we do little intros if people aren't... Maybe they know your voice and they don't actually know what you look like. <laughs> Okay, let's start with you, Nico. Yeah, so I'm Nico. Um, I do research in cryptography, zero knowledge. I uh, work at Geometry with he who is not here today. Um, he is real. He is real. Um, and yeah, I think that's sort of it. Cool. He who shall not be named. Oh. Um, uh, hi, I'm Guillermo. I, uh, I'm a glorified paper editor at Bain Capital Crypto. I guess I write papers with Tarun, and Alex is also sitting right there. Um, and... Yeah, I guess that's kind of it. I don't really have too much to say. That's all you do? Yeah, kind of, pretty much. My free time. You can play piano. Oh, I play piano, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, like, bake pizza. You do. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. If you ever follow my Twitter, great. I have great pizza tips. (laughs) If you want a sourdough recipe or a sourdough starter, happy to mail you one or something, you know? Mailing a sourdough starter? (laughs) Oh, yeah, of course. Come on. Merch for ZK11. Really? You're not. We're not. (laughs) You gotta do what? Okay. Look, I don't know. I don't know anything about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're up. Uh, I'm Tarun, uh, founder of Gauntlet, uh, also investor of Robot Ventures, and uh, have been on this podcast for a long time, covering all the non-ZK things and convincing Anna there inter- there is There's interesting th- things in MEV land and <laughs> DeFi. Yeah. Actually, so I mean, I think all of you, but especially you, Tarun, you've brought on so many guests that I would never have had on that became either like, you know, people who really influenced my thinking, friends, like, I mean, I think Guillermo was a guest that you brought on and then became a co-host, so that's pretty (laughs) cool. Um, So what I, I think we have a few questions, we were kind of brainstorming what we wanted to talk about. As I mentioned, please remember that this should be very interactive. I just want to find out where is the mic? Where are the mics? You have the mics. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to ask a question, just put up your hand and wait for a mic because we want to capture it on the audio stream. Um, A theme that I feel has come up actually repeatedly today, I think it's sort of you hinted at it, it was really just the ZK use case question mark. (laughs) Will, like, will it happen? Where does it come from? What does it look like? Do we, you know, I felt after the ZK hack Lisbon, I was like, so many applications, like so many ideas. But since then, I actually haven't, like, I, I think I was asked recently, like, what's the new ZK idea use case that you've seen? And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I've, like, been bombarded by them since then. And so, yeah, I think that's maybe a starting point. Uh, ZK use cases, where are we at? Are they coming? Have you heard about them? Do you think they're real? I think Tarun has a good answer to this, at least a partial answer to this. I think there is like, uh, you know, I think the ZK coprocessor kind of, you know, boom that started with Axiom, I guess, last year was sort of hinting at this idea that like people want something else out of ZK than just like roll ups, compression, validating an L1. Because at some level, that's just like not that interesting, right? Like if I pick a random person on the street in London and I, I go, oh my God, we can fucking compress this blockchain like 100 times faster. They're just going to like call the police, right? Uh, and so the real, the real question becomes like, uh, you know, something that convinces people has to have some, something interesting. It needs to, maybe it needs to reveal something interesting about something that already exists. Maybe it needs to reveal, you know, it needs to have some sort of monetary premium in some ways. Like, the, you know, if I think about object X with a proof and object X without a proof, is there a reason that the thing should be worth more with a proof? That's like one avenue of things I've seen. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, I would say I'm wholeheartedly generally disappointed both in the <laughs> community and Damn. people working on this stuff because like everyone, everyone, every time they start working on application, they pivot into working on a proving system. I, oh. I'm a bit confused with the coprocessor thing. Like, what do we mean? Is it like just executing something off chain and giving a proof on chain that it happened? And is this not what we've been doing so far anyway? I think it's more this idea that there's like a lack of synchrony, right? right. Like in a, in a roll up proving system, you kind of have to have proofs running synchronously, continuously over mm -hmm. time. But in these like asynchronous use cases, it might be like, oh, like, hey, when certain state changes happen, I do a calculation on historical state, compute some number, send it to a contract, right? Mm. But again, it still feel like it feels like it's like infrastructure, right? Like yeah, everyone is, working is on that, that stuff is like, yeah. is like, oh, but it's trying to be less mm -hmm. than a roll-up. You know, I think, and, and like you can kind of see people inching at it, but I kind of think the, the mo most interesting thing about going to ZK hackathons versus going to say like ETH global hackathons is like, Every ZK hackathon seems to only think about applications that people who understand what a finite field is like want to use, which is like not really a great start. I, I guess it feels like you're aiming towards like what are non-blockchain but potentially blockchain adjacent applications of ZK, right? Like it feels like every application of ZK is, in, in some sense, ZK feels very tailor-made for blockchains more broadly, right? But I the, the just, I want to make sure that the, I understand the question, which is, are there non-blockchain applications of ZK that clearly demonstrate some value that is, like, obvious to just your average person on the street? But I think it could be connected to blockchain. I think it's the end user part that is still potentially missing. I mean, there's a whole question of, like, are blockchains even connected to the end user in a reasonable way? But that's... We, we yeah, that, that, there so, so a great statistic is, uh, I think... Flashbots putting out a blog on this next week is that, and I'm gonna, for for those of you who 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 cringe when you hear some security vulnerability sounding things <laughs> that people love using, get ready. Uh, but uh, something like 15% of volume to MEV auctions and MEV RPCs and private mempools is currently coming from Telegram bots. These Telegram bots, the first versions of them, were people sent you a seed phrase, sent you their seed phrase in Telegram, and then you would trade on their behalf. They wrote a little script that would read the seed phrase, start trading. Then, of course, you know they got pilloried for that, and then it became MPC Wallet, where it was like, oh, you need two out of two shares to do a withdraw. One share can do certain types of trades. Still, tons of vulnerabilities, but fifteen percent volume. These didn't exist three months ago. Like this should just tell you that this consumer wants convenience and wants to not think and. People in ZK application land don't seem to think at that. Mm. Wow, you just like on that on your comment earlier, you did just like diss this audience. I thought that was pretty brave. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you didn't, sorry, you sorry, didn't sorry. Make sorry. A note I, I, of that. I'm not like trying to <laughs> disappointed <laughs> all of you. Yeah. <laughs> it's great though. Sorry, have we answered the question? Well, we we've, we've definitely started the conversation about use cases. I think that focus on the on the end user. You sort of taught you. You were trying to get clarification if we meant like non-blockchain, off-blockchain. Um, I don't know. Do we have any? Uh, I, I think I, like. Do we have any stats on like what is the product using zk that has actually had the most impressions? Mm. And I think I know which one it might be, and I Ooh. don't like it. <laughs> uh oh. It is your least favorite application. Is it my least favorite? That might be the one that. You know what we're talking about? I don't know. What is this? Oh, can we say it? What? Audience, guess guess what Anna's least favorite application <laughs> is that generates your knowledge proofs. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say it. I don't know if that hey, was look, picked look, up look. on the mic, actually. <laughs> we could just leave it as this vague unknown. I didn't say it. Um, actually, okay. I'll try to rephrase or relate an argument that was given to me just maybe like an hour ago about applications. Is that it's maybe okay that we don't know what they are. Like they, they will probably just emerge out of these things being available and out of having people with a different mindset, people who aren't thinking about finite fields mm -hmm. to show up and see like, oh, I can do X and Y thing and start doing it. Yeah, actually to defend, like Tarun, I think your disappointment is fair for this moment, but just picture like in the next few months, there are going to be all like a number of platforms coming out 
language with like way better tools so people can start experimenting. So far, you've had to be so in the weeds to use a lot of this stuff. And I mean, to be honest, we don't know how easy, fully easy it'll be right away, but there's definitely like strong, you know, a strong push by a number of teams to create those sandboxes or playgrounds or things where you can start to deploy and play and build something fast. I mean, the contrarian take is like, isn't, isn't that just cope? Isn't it just like, <laughs> like we're all like, you know, we've built a bunch of tools and like if we build it, they will come, but will they? Well, come? I think if they exist, then we will see, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I, how do you judge when it's like super hard to build stuff still? Yeah, right. But you, you know, the, the question is like, it's kind of asking to predict the future in, in a way, right? But you could imagine the future goes something, I don't think it will, which is why, you know, I think we're sitting here. But could go something like everyone builds a bunch of really sick tools that like do all great things very quickly, but then everyone just ends up using like JavaScript and not caring about the ZK part of it. Because like, ah, whatever, yeah. you know, users mm-hmm. at the end of the day don't care about that. I don't know. This is, I, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I don't really have a well, push on this. Well, we also have that in ZK world, right? We have a lot of tools that mm-hmm. sort of are built to adapt regular code into ZK. Like if you think of things like Risk Zero, the whole point is forget about the ZK part, just compile to Risk Five and we'll do the rest for you. So we can bring these people in who just want to think in JavaScript. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. I guess like, you know, you could imagine that for a very long time, the entire purpose of like mm. building this ZK thing, right, is kind of like lost on someone. Like yeah. it's easy. Let's say it's let's say it's very easy. You know, it's actually like just one line change from running JavaScript, right? And they're like, ah, you know, but it takes fifteen minutes to run this on an AWS server somewhere. In order but then to the thing is, like, who cares? Okay. But it almost sounds then like the characteristics that ZK brings need to be the thing that you're building for, right? So then it like is it so privacy again? Or the thing that we need to broadcast? Like we need to make clear what it what it is that we are unlocking for people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing to say too. I mean, it's like look. Maybe if not only we make this available, but you actually have to, you know, we have to go touch grass every once in a while, which is a fine thing to ask for, right? I think if you do that, maybe, yeah, maybe you will get some real adoption. I don't know. I mean, I, yeah. I, again, my, my obvious opinion on this is I think it will, like, in the future, ZK will actually be a thing that people actually use very transparently. But there's a, you know, the, it, it, the opposite case is, is like, Reasonable, I think. Yeah, I think we have a question from the audience. I'm wondering who are the end users in this hypothetical scenario right now? Because in my imagination, cryptography, or not just in my imagination, sorry, in my worldview, I think, cryptography is something that the end user is not concerned about. It is mm-hmm. just there and it works. For example, if you use Signal, like the average user doesn't care that it's end to end encrypted, but it is still there. So are we targeting developers here or are we talking or targeting the average person on London streets? I mean, I guess for that, it's like there needs to be urgency for what is being offered. And I think there's these moments where like something happens in the world where people realize like they have no privacy and that matters because something like some, you know, just horrible story, anecdote, narrative pops up. And for a little while, everyone cares and they kind of scramble to get, you know, on signal instead of whatever they were on, or on, you know, we saw, we, I think we Mastodon. saw it. on. I tried it. But, Oof. yeah, I mean, I think there's been these, way, like, mini spikes of, like, people caring, but it hasn't seemingly been sustained yet. Um, but I think it's still coming. So is the conclusion we should fund more Black Mirror episodes? <laughs> yeah. Not freaked out? Well, I think it's, unfortunately, I think it's, like, real world things have to happen. And then people seem to care. Or, or you find things that are other benefits of ZK that are not strictly privacy, right? Like, there are a bunch of other benefits you get from, from verifiable compute. And, like, those things should be the things that you push, not necessarily privacy. I, I, I'm not saying that privacy isn't the main one. But I do think privacy is the one where we'll be waiting a long time. Or, like, we have, there's, like, basically infinite variance in the time you have to wait. I'm, I think the another thing that happened, right, which is how we got, you know, privacy, security, cryptography everywhere is it became essentially indistinguishable from not cryptography, right? Like you write a little S in your web browser, HTTPS, and like, all right, congratulations. Like you got a nice little green bar that says you're chilling, right? But, you know, at the end of the day, 
if you ask someone to describe the difference between HTTPS and HTTP, it's like, okay, good luck, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's also some notion where it becomes so easy and so transparent that it's kind of obvious. There's no reason to do anything else because, you know, why the hell would you have something that's strictly worse, right? I don't know. This is a... Yeah, yeah. But we're not there yet, right? Like, right now, doing it in ZK, even if you add a little S and you have ZK, is strictly slower. That's right. And, like, by a large amount. Yes, exactly. Okay, I think we had a question over here. I'm going to... Oh, you have the mic. Perfect. Um, so, for a long time, governments have been looking for ways to make online voting happen. Yeah. Um, why isn't ZK the perfect solution for this? Because, you know, it's verifiable. Like, after the fact, I can go and use whatever I, whatever I got returned after voting. I can use that to verify, oh, actually, my vote got, got tallied in, in the total. Um, why isn't that a good use case? I think it is a good use case. It's I a think- great use case. And there have been experiments. Um, I remember in France, the last, like, um, parliament elections that we had, French people living abroad could vote online, and it did use, like, some form of zero-knowledge proof. It wasn't, like, fully ZK and fully bulletproof. There was a lot of trust in the government to do this correctly. But there was, like, an element of ZK. Mm. Sorry, what part of the voting problem does ZK solve, actually? I I actually have no idea. So prove that you're a registered voter, that you haven't voted yet, um, that you're above a certain age, that you're voting for one of the eligible candidates without revealing who you're voting for, who you are, etc. Yeah, I would actually, to, to continue on that idea, like I've also heard about sort of not quite projects in the works or even like they're, they're sort of thinking. There's been basically inquiries by governments to learn more about that. I mean, that's even come through some of the you know things that we've been doing. I've heard about that. So I think your point is good. I think the timing is not there yet. Also, I think tooling... Mm-hmm for a long time was not there. And I think trust in it is not quite there. Like, I think there needs to be sort of like, you know, great tools that can be well understood, that are super well vetted, that people feel comfortable with somewhere out in the world. Then you do a project just to try it out with some government somewhere. And then that's kind of proven. And then like, that's how it would happen. I actually think we are kind of at stage, like between stage one and stage two Mm -hmm. of that. Just Uh, not yet. I'll add a few comments. Like, it's like online payments at first, like people are like, don't pay online. Like don't, don't put your credit card information ever. And today we're fine just like writing in our card details on the website and just throwing it off. So there's been some kind of mentality change of, yes, I can trust that if I put my things here, HTTPS, we're all good. The other thing is there are still challenges that aren't resolved. And one of the big ones is civil resistance. Like how do I make sure that there aren't the same user making a bunch of like bots essentially and voting? And that ZK alone doesn't solve and I think we're still trying to figure out the best way to do it. I also would say I think like an online internet native institution would be the first real consumer. Governments are just inevitably going to have like too high a bar and like they have to cater to the least common denominator like to be able to use the system and that places huge UX constraints on the developers of these systems. Uh, To the point about the HTTPS and the lock, the lock took a long time, and it took a lot of like standardization, took a lot of browser changes. Um, I kind of think ZK just hasn't figured out what its lock is. It doesn't have like a way of proving to the user that without this proof, you get the wrong answer, right? Like, there's no there's there's no UX for it. I mean, using a ZK mobile wallet makes me want to just commit seppuku. Like, it's like a horrible experience. I think there's a question. There's actually a question right here. Um, so regarding jumping back on the privacy aspect of ZK, I think the focus is too much on the consumer, which might doesn't care in the end about privacy, even though he might want it. So you might want to shift the perspective to the businesses because they do have the incentive to not have to um, store all this data because of the regulation, especially in Europe with the GDPR. So if you give them the opportunity to not having to store all those confidential data and just have like single proofs, for those, especially, like, for example, proof of identity, then they may be pushed, financially speaking, to actually integrate it, which is good for the user and good for them. That means, though, that we're going to have ZK SaaS products. Some. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, not ODR. It's a thing. Whatever. Well, but like, like ZKKYC, yeah. right? Like huh? ZKKYC. So you sign up to yeah. some exchange, and rather than having to send all your personal information, and they have to like, you know, respect GDPR and save these things correctly. That's a really good use case. Yeah. Although, I mean, for businesses, it could be all sorts of things. I think you can also, hmm. like, the you don't want to share, you want to pay on chain, you don't want to share the incomes of everyone in your team to each other, whatever. There's like, or your suppliers, or there's like yeah. always been these ideas of how to do that. Yeah, that also applies to it. For yeah. example, if you want to prove that you, as a business you have certain financial abilities, but you don't want to share the entire bank statement or your like. Yeah, everything you can just make a proof as well. It is crazy. There are no business. There are. There's very few. I I'm sorry to go back to SaaS businesses, but and I know they're very untrendy. So much SaaS. <laughs> but like, there there aren't very. I think there's a couple projects I've seen in sort of around the zk space who like hint at doing something like that, but it's just very untrendy right now in our ecosystem it seems but like maybe that's the way that happens like you almost need like a bridge like it might be like living on some network deep cryptography you have some SaaS business that interfaces to an ex existing businesses they don't need to know what's happening under the hood yeah and the middle it's this middleware Ugh. I, I, I will I will not why I got into this industry I, I will I will <laughs> it's, it's a needed it's a needed thing I will say, you know, like from the perspective of like businesses that have to cooperate with each other, share some information, but not all their information. For some reason, almost all the products that do that use MPC. <laughs> like, I don't think there's as many that try to even consider ZK. So, but are they there? Do those businesses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like full that, businesses. Like, yeah, it, it's more it's, like Google and like Apple have an MPC thing between, you know, and Cloudflare, right? Like it, it's actually between data centers and it's like, it's not like a very consumer use case of MPC, but it is, it is actually quite a big use case between businesses that don't want to like share all their information. want to share some targeted thing, especially for incident response and stuff. But it's extremely niche, right? It's like these tech companies building their own little like private MPC stuff between them. So, but, but yeah, there's no ZK in that. There was another question here. Oh, yeah. There's one over here. Oh, you, no? Did we answer oh, we it? We have Mary. Mary has a question over there. Oh, sorry. I think Mary. That's good. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah, I think Mary had her hand up first. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Front running. <laughs> After. The ultimate rug pull. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. This is actually going back to the online voting thing. There are actually some technical concerns with that, which would make me really not want to recommend recommending that use case a big one being that if you have people's votes encrypted and public then there does not exist an encryption scheme that is secure today that we know will be secure 10 years from now that just not, does not exist yeah forward secrecy is definitely a hard part problem <laughs> but there are expiring ckps so yeah mm. i mean that that topic uh, we did this episode Recently, and actually, I just had a conversation before about this: the post-quantum cryptography, and then the cryptography for quantum, and um, <laughs> and yeah, that that sort of that's the crazy thing about like even all that we're building. Like, if if it gets broken eventually, then all those past secrets could be revealed, which is kind of terrifying. So and I know that may, maybe wasn't what you were, you meant, but yeah, with zero knowledge, it's not the case. Like the the privacy guarantee of zero knowledge is perfect uh, but with encryption it is the problem and that's why like encrypted votes is a problem encrypted uh, data about your genome if you've done any of those like 23andme tests I don't know, if if that ciphertext is public anywhere someone can like keep it for a while and try to hack at it later and they'll they'll find out <laughs> yeah so i guess i think you weren't mentioning that though you were just saying like there are no systems today same problem yeah. that you'd feel comfortable with. Um, I think you have the you have the next you question. The next? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so you're talking about like new zk use cases and like exciting things, but maybe it makes sense to kind of focus on the old ones because like there is you know everybody is like well zk is for privacy kind of like let's forget about succinctness and all of this stuff because it's like not exactly zk but whatever. Not really. So. Um, <laughs> Back to privacy, right? So 
we are working hard on like creating new proving systems, right? It's like new proving system every like three months or something like that. <laughs> and it, it's fine, right? But like maybe it makes sense to kind of work on abstracting it away from the user so that we don't have to look for new ZK use cases, but we can like develop a stable, um, I don't know, um, kind of structure for it so that users don't know that they use ZK for privacy or whatever. They just use something and we just work on making this something accessible and then behind that there is a ZK. And I guess for that it kind of requires to like work on the old use cases. Mm. Do you mean like standards? Um, not exactly standards, but I guess like more thinking about like, you know, how to improve what we do now like the the projects that we have now that uh, provide privacy instead of like creating a new project that does something like i don't know private voting private something mm. it's like you know kind of like you have chairs right and like you don't like come up with like new exciting way to use chairs every week right <laughs> you just like make it as comfortable as possible and then people just sit in it and they're but like isn't that kind of happening like don't you feel like some of the like those teams that have built a lot of stuff, they're like they're wait they're waiting and hoping that people will start building on top of them, so it's like abstracted away from them. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, it just kind of felt like you know people feel a little bit upset about like lack of new exciting zk use cases. Mm. I, I mean, in a sense, that's what like zk VMs are doing, right? And like they're simply abstracting the underlying zk. They just say, look, we give you a guarantee. You compile to X language whatever it is, or you write X language and we'll interpret it for you. And you don't ever have to think about ZK except insofar as you do something like whatever proof.verify and then that returns true or whatever, mm. right? So I, I think people are doing that. I mean, I think there's still plenty of unfortunate technical details that do have to go into some of it. Um, I mean, RIS0 being one that is like trying to avoid that as much as possible, but many other VMs certainly are, right? Some are blockchain specific, some are not. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's starting, right? Certainly like it's recognized that this is a huge pain point. Like why the hell should I have to give a crap about like the underlying field of you know, whatever proving system I give a crap about, right? And, and when in reality, I should just be able to write, you know, as an you know, old fart, like C or something. Right, and have that you know correctly execute and compile with whatever memory. Yeah, I mean, one way of another way of thinking about it is that there's no, there just hasn't been like the TensorFlow moment. Even though now everyone kind of shits on TensorFlow, if you think about it, in 2012, that was like 2013 when it came out. It was like that was the thing that enabled a lot of people to like go try training models uh, who had you know no training or anything. They just followed some guides and they're able to like bullshit their way through something, and then it seemed to work. And then you know it kind of spun out and grew and then of course people made better and be more and more easy frameworks right like literally you know pytorch is extraordinarily easy um and there's a sense in which no one seems to care that much about doing that in zk land I, or, or not me well, no one but it definitely feels like everyone goes for like let's have this amazing functional language and make someone have to think so much about like storage structures and like I, I just don't think any of these people ever fucking talk to a JavaScript developer. <laughs> uh, I want to I want to grab back the uh, the mic the the theme because we had a few questions and actually you sort of just hinted at one of them, which is that definition of zk, mm. which I think is kind of controversial. I feel like I have a slightly controversial take on this. So a few months ago, I guess it's now a few months ago, Justin Thaler at A16Z, uh, published an article with these like misconceptions about ZK, and one of them was very much about like the word ZK, the way it's being used. We just hinted at it with like ZK, zero knowledge for privacy versus sort of parts of snarks for succinctness. It's actually not ZK anymore, but it still falls under the umbrella. So I just sort of want to, since I have a, a room full of ZK people mm -hmm. and succinct people, should we, you know, what do, what do you make of that? Should we still use ZK as the umbrella term or not? So th I think there's like a type system, right? <laughs> and like at the highest level when someone says ZK and like it, it depends on the context in which it's like measured, right? It's like an anthropological. Singleton? Yeah, so, so this is a singleton and then there's like a partial order, right? But the point is like when someone says ZK and it's in this context, it's in good company, in polite company, you wouldn't want to say this. But, but in, in this company, we're all a bit weird, so it's fine. 
Uh, it refers to everything. Right? It's fine. You say ZK, so sync proofs are all the same, sync arguments, uh, whatever you want, all ZK. Yeah. Uh, the second that you step out into the real world and you say ZK to someone, like you've lost. Like you've you've automatically lost, right? You that's that's when you get, you know, you you put on your nicest, like whatever fancy dress or whatever, right? And then you go to someone and you're like, okay. <laughs> like I don't know. We talk about succinct proofs, we talk about succinct arguments, and when we talk about zero knowledge, we really do mean zero knowledge, right? Every, everything else just oh. parses differently in a different context. Like, okay, simply, it's like, just... Wait, so when you go out in the fancy dress, yes. you have to use ZK properly? Yeah. You have to yes. use ZK Why? properly. That's correct. That's so those are the people who might get confused. Oh, That's right. If you say ZK wow. to someone who can't make the difference, and they think they're d using something private when they're That's not, true. there's a problem. Whereas, probably in this room, if I say ZK to people, they'll know to check, oh, is this privacy or is this scalability? Exactly. I, I, I think maybe a, a somewhat more pragmatic thing for that maybe people in this room might appreciate more, though, is that ZK as a shelling point for a term that investors could glom onto was extremely <laughs> successful. Exactly. It was true. very it's successful true. for it's fundraising. True. Like, And mm -hmm. every single person in this room who raised any type of capital owes it to all of the people who basically branded everything as one thing and then sold it as a bucket to limited partners and other people as a thing to fund. And fundamentally, yeah. that actually funded a lot of this stuff. So, like, you know, you can you can kind of bash the the non-cognoscenti who, who, who get confused, but half of you don't have fuck jobs if this is it's, thing. So I'm case of so on board with that. With that. Right. No, no, yeah. no, no, I agree, but it's more like <laughs> protection and avoiding the foot gun. Of calling something private when it's not. I, right? I'm just, I'm just oh. thinking it, it's the type of thing that you can't go backwards on. Like Look, people yeah, have no, turned this right, meme, right. and the meme is like what you know. So zk what, zk roll up, right? Like yeah, you start exactly. going into. <laughs> like, so sorry, I guess my, my my main point was I would not deem talking to investors polite company. Like your entire argument is predicated on <laughs> okay, this. Okay, fine. right? Yeah. So I, I, I like that you're dissing yourself there. Buddy. That's part. Uh, okay, but, you I'll, as well. but I'll you know, add it's, it's, to this. So I think you highlighted the fundraising part. But I also think that, like, catchy short terms like MEV, like ZK, also capture mindshare, mm -hmm. even when they're kind of peripheral, maybe not exactly. And so I, as someone who's named a lot of my company's products, <laughs> newsletter with that first letter ZK, yeah, this first letter ZK, like, I'm so guilty of it. You all know the Zero Knowledge podcast when it started wasn't about zero knowledge. We <laughs> had <scalability>. zero knowledge. <laughs> it was about scalability. No, it wasn't even about that. Um, but yeah, I, my sense is the sort of the camaraderie, the, the tr it, it is a bit of a branding thing. It like at this, at this moment or so far, it's also seemed like a good center point for attracting talent and people who want to learn and get excited and you there's a community and that's that's special and i really think you're a fan of the vibes the zk vibe zk I, stands for zk i vibe. think it is very <laughs> obvious that i am a fan of the vibes I, I mean, okay <laughs> so in the same way we have like the https if the privacy equivalent of this s is zk then we have a problem if we have another way of signifying privacy yeah. then i'm happy to call everything zk I mean, that's, I think that point, and actually what you were saying is like, out in the world, one should be accurate, especially if the properties of ZK are being very, like, very much communicated, and then they're not being delivered. I think that would be very dangerous. I think that's what a lot of the arguments against calling everything ZK say. But I think what might happen instead is that ZK as a term just becomes kind of it's not immediately associated. Like, I think that's actually happened. I don't know that ZK is associated with only privacy anymore. That's right. So it, as a term, does not signify private. For the record, I blame the roll-ups. Yeah. yeah I they, mean, they literally caused this, this wait, <laughs> yeah, what? problem. <laughs> you blame the roll-ups. The roll-ups basically were like, roll hey, we're, do we're, we're generating zero-knowledge proofs, uh, and, and they call oh, themselves proofs. ZK roll-ups. Snarks. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. They they started to gen- they generated snarks, but then they like basically started branding themselves as ZK, and then they raised a ton of money doing that, and they've convinced everyone who buys tokens that yeah. ZK <laughs> means actually think- Tarun. I think it went the other way. I think a lot of those teams were at ZK one, ZK two. They were ZK companies, and then they Ooh, focused on this. Actually, okay, and there's okay. a lot of Ooh, examples that's of fair, this. That's fair. They started to focus on the scalable because it was less scary and more. Hmm. There was more potential upside. Sorry. If yeah, just yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. But, but it's but, true, but it, right? It goes Over. back to fundraising. And, but the <laughs> names, <laughs> they, a little bit, but the names remained. Like, the names remained. And actually, a lot of those teams were incredible contributors to early libraries. Like, they, they have the legitimacy, in a way, to be in. They, they were in the space. They were there early. But they just shifted. And I think that's where, the, where that weird legacy comes from. There was also some teams playing on the ambiguity, where the website would advertise ZK Snark, ZK Snark, or ZK Stark, ZK Stark, but then the actual system that they're building and that they get people to use Our ignores the ZK part. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know. But, I, yeah, I mean, since then, I think there's been teams... Yeah, yeah, they, a lot of people have and, rolled back just on some it, of the older ones, clearer. they were originally... Zero knowledge. Yeah. Zero, zero knowledge. The ZK, ZK. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, it, maybe the, the highest level of way of thinking about it is just ZK is just like a term of endearment, right? That's, that's maybe the best way. Of, Mr., like, Mrs., Dr., <laughs> K. and ZK, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening in the ML space? Do we have a lot of people, like, branding things ML, which isn't ML? Yes. So like, uh, yeah. yeah. So how do they that. solve it? There's a ton of AI companies that have looking, people in the Philippines doing all the work. <laughs> are we looking to ML to solve our problem? <laughs> no, I'm just oh, no. like trying to see if this problem was but, but, somewhere but I, else, right? I, so so I, I will say one interesting kind of observation about this is people who are doing layer ones or like pure new chains, they actually seem to respect the privacy aspect of the moniker, but people who are doing roll-ups don't give a shit. And, and I know some of you will take offense to that. But fundamentally, roll-ups only really care about this, like, compression aspect of a snark. They don't... Except for Aztec. Okay, fine. Most they're, roll-ups, they're real. Most roll-ups don't, <laughs> like... Do, they really don't care because it's also fundamentally, like, not... They have to do so much more work to be private versus, like, an L1 where they can build it in. So there was also this kind of fork philosophically between the two of them that I think caused this insane disambiguation but then they also both need to raise money at the same time so then they sold the same term so back to the fundraising i i, I think i think Somehow. i think i think it does it, it does boil down to that yeah fair there but one. i do think we we profited from it still we have to acknowledge that oh for sure yeah. made it to 10 of these 10 i know right. yeah okay is there... there there was one question here. oh i think it was on a past topic yeah we're gonna i think we're gonna um, oh, no, it wasn't a pass off. <laughs> there was a note that just came out, but we can move oh. on. Um, <laughs> so for, let's see, I wanted to continue on. There was a topic about ZK crossovers. So you kind of mentioned ZKML. Uh, there's, I'm curious about what your thoughts are. Like you've, been, you've mentioned a number of times, like MPC. There is a ZK MPC crossover. There's ZK FHE, there's ZK MEV, <laughs> there's ZK DeFi. I guess that's ZK MEV. ZK DeFi is more legit than ZK MEV at this point in time. Uh, oh, okay. That, what what are those two things? Given that then? everyone just wants to use SGX, um, <laughs> but uh, I mean ZK, this is just an honest truth. Uh, it's M-E- I got MEV TE. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Different crossover episode there. I feel like you got to make some like swag for this, like all the crossovers. For each, all the crossovers. It's like a shoe drop. Yeah. Like and, and a shoe. Drop. What do you think? Oh, that might happen one right. day. I might... I'm so into that. <laughs> I, have you guys seen our swag game? It's getting good. It's really like socks. I mean, socks. I don't know. Books. <laughs> what, what was the cool thing that we did? <laughs> What's the cool? What? Tea bags this time. Yeah, we're in London. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that. Those little squares are tea bags for ZK10. (laughs) But yeah, I think like going back to just that crossover, ZK crossover episodes, what are the, like, which ones do you think are legit and which ones do you think are kind of like? I wouldn't say there's legit and non-legit, but some of them are like ZK as a thin wrapper over something else. Or like, we're just doing this thing that we used to do in a ZK circuit. And other ones where, like, we are just changing the things that we're doing. So, like, 
ZK MPC and like the ability to generate proofs as like a committee. That's new and that's very interesting. Um, ZKML is very interesting in its promise and what comes out of it. But in terms of like the research, it is just like, can I run a big ZK circuit? Is ZKML real? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Um, and it's a wonderful engineering effort. I don't know if it's a cryptographic effort, right? Which ZKML sort of hints at, maybe, or maybe that's me like reading too much into it. And again, like reading ZK and getting angry. <laughs> well, that's, that's, I mean, you're saying it's like a wrapper. Do you mean like the work is not in the ZK part? The work is in building circuits and adapters for ML to be compatible with ZK proof systems. Yeah. And that's super hard. Um, but so it is, it's, but it's, it, the work which, isn't in the ZK itself. Wait, which side are they adapting though? Are they adapt? Because like, I've kind of heard both, like adapting hmm. the ZK side or adapt, adapting the ML side. But I mean, I don't know what's got more potential. I feel like ML must Fair. be way more developed. You've got to adapt ZK, right? I'm assuming. I don't know. So far, I, it's not like I've seen drastic changes to proof systems for ML. It's, okay, so they I've are seen using some existing, incredible so uses of existing arithmetization, like super smart ways of doing it. Mm. Um, but it's not like someone came up with a proof system specifically for ML. Guillermo and I were actually just having this conversation earlier, <laughs> which is that, in fact, it's actually a travesty no one is making specific yeah. proof systems for ML because things we like have folding tools, schemes right? are perfect for matrix multiplication and like doing optimizing for like these operations instead of optimizing for a VM. It feels like you know, you're, oh, really? you're kind of like there is a simple calculation, shoving it into a yeah. big circuit, big VM, just so your general purpose thing can execute it and then generating a small proof versus special purpose proving. And in some ways, ML is in general, statistical calculations are just way better when made, there's tons of special purpose stuff done. Huh. I mean, I think it's, it's right. Yeah. Like, like fundamentally, there's like, you know, when you build a processor, right, the entire point of the processor is that it can execute anything. Right, but this is not true of ML. ML isn't executing anything. It's executing a very specific set of instructions like 500 million times, right? So, so fundamentally, it's kind of, you know, we're doing all this wasted effort, reducing one thing to another and then doing the other reduction and whatever Weird. up until kind of we get to the end. But this, you don't really need to do all of that. It just suffices to kind of like get good. Well, it, so, the comment you just made about the folding, though, is, is the work unfolding leading to mm -hmm. proving systems that would be better suited for ZKML? So there is this one repo on, called Zater, which uses folding to sort of um, compute different layers of the like ML, whatever's going on there. I'm not familiar with that. But <laughs> they essentially like, <laughs> yeah, but they, they use folding to sort of like scrunch that down into one layer and then prove just that. So yeah, there are like more integrated use uses of like ZK tools. Interesting. And there's more to be done because like these proof systems for generic circuits, you pay an overhead by making it generic. We don't need that. Yeah, and there's a lot of known optimizations in the ML side that like a lot of the calculations are actually very like repeated patterns. Like most of the models have like computation that's repeated multiple times, even like something like a boosted tree or just like a forest of boosted trees. Those are very regular calculations. They're not like extremely irregular, like worst case behavior calculations. And in some sense, it's almost a travesty that almost a, a lot of the work in, in ZKML has definitely focused on like getting out the initial prototypes, which have been like, take a really simple calculation, but then put it into this very complicated machine, and that translation layer actually adds a lot of overhead. Um, but I think, I suspect by next year, we'll see some very good special purpose mm. ML. Letter. I do okay. want to remind the audience that if you have any comments or things you want to add, just remember to put your hand up. We'll, we'll call on you. We'll bring a mic over. Um, I want to kind of keep going with those crossovers, though. So we've, kind of, we've covered, you say ZK, MEV, Bullshit. Doesn't exist. No, no, no. I, I was <laughs> I was at an MEV conference giving a, a talk, and I I, 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 I made this po point that I was like all, almost all the mitigation mechanisms of different things we were talking about were pretty useless unless you had FHE, and they were like FHE, 
No, nah, we're fine with just like using SGX for everything. So it's like it's it's just like I don't think people in MEV land they only kind of care about performance. They don't care about verifiability mm. in a strong manner. So mm. it's just communi- they they're culturally distinct and don't care about it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah, it's like a like anthropologically different. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, completely. Like, the value system is like orthogonal. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. ZK FHE. So cool. yeah. So last year, I mean, I think at the last summit we had Ravitel speak on ZK and FHE. And actually, I, I had had her on the show right around that time. She introduced me to the idea that there's such thing as ZK, what is lattice, lattice-based ZKPs, which you kind of need if you're working with FHE. Similar thing, right, where you're, like, adjusting the ZK proving system, the kinds of maths underneath, mm-hmm. so that they match to one of these crossovers. And, I mean, she was very much, she's very pragmatic, and she's like, it's not ready, it's going to take some time. But it made me interested. There was not a ton of work. So what do we time. mean by ZK FHE? Like, I give you a proof that I ran something correctly? And that something happens to be on encrypted data? Yeah, I wouldn't be able to define it. Okay. I think she defined it well on the right. episode, but it was it was definitely like using them in tandem. Mm. Maybe you just said it correctly. I'm not entirely sure. I just remember her talking about altering the math right. of the on the ZK side. Or the type yeah, the type of Okay, so what I just described is again just a thin wrapper okay. of ZK around what FHE is already doing. So I take encrypted data, I do some calculations, I give it back to you, you can decrypt. If I now prove that I did my calculation correctly, I'm just doing just ZK as usual. By the way, if somebody here, like we're talking to an audience of like experts uh, on this thing, wait, I see wait, someone wait. going like this. If you want to, do you want to say something? Uh, do you want to put your hand not up aware so they of can the find ZK you? Stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. I think we just yeah d- define it for us. I have I still actually have hmm. no idea what this is. So I think I think the definition is correct, but it's okay. it's harder than that. Oh, no, no, of course it's hard. Okay, yeah, because it's not just a thin wrapper. I think that. I mean, there's probably like cryptographers in the room that, that can go into, into more details, but the, the math don't really align. So you can't just like use existing proof systems and hope to, to prove an FHE circuit. So, so sorry, here's the, here's the dumb question. So essentially what it is is we can think of kind of FHE, you can do very few calculations, and then essentially you have some sort of Oracle call that says, I need someone else to perform a computation, uh, and you would provide me a proof that the computation was done correctly. Uh, and then, so it, it, is it like, is, is that correct? Is that yeah, the, that, that would be this kind of things. But I guess, okay. uh, I'm, not, I'm not too sure what Ravital is, is talking about, but I guess the law hanging fruit in a way is that you do need some form of proof uh, to, to make like some FHE use cases work. Mm-hmm. Because if you can, for, as you were saying, like if you have an oracle and you can ask like a decryption, uh, of, a, of an FHE ciphertext, which is, could be like the result of something that has been computing with FHE, you can like spam this oracle with like correctly formed ciphertext, but that, that are random in a way. You can very easily like extract the secret key of the, of the FHE scheme. So you do need some kind of proof that you knew the, cipher, the, the original plain text that was encoded to lead to this computation that produced the result. Uh-huh. Otherwise, you're screwed. And very quickly screwed. So, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And, and Tarun, I, I disagree. Like, the MEV people care about FHE. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. I, I, I think the, the, there are people who think they do. But oh. then if you go, <laughs> oh. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you talk to them and ask them, like, what they want out of these systems and why they're engineering them a certain way, then they, define, like, give you a completely define, different answer than their philo- philosophical answer. Define MEV people, then. Because I think, I think what you mean is that the, the MEV searchers, they only care about the speed. No, but no, no. The, I, I mean, I literally am talking about like people builders. designing the auctions, right, right? The people building the auctions, they all are like, we like FHE, but it's actually too annoying for us to use. So we're going to do this SGX thing and then hope that one day we just cross over and it works perfectly. But I care about FHE. <laughs> and, and you work okay. in that? And I'm with Flashbots. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, well, it's, it's, it's a pragmatic thing. It's like, yeah. we, we care about like making things available for end users and whether we like it or not, it's true that SGX is probably like the most pragmatic choice today. But we would love to have FHE. And, and probably, you know, down the line, it probably means like some kind of like FHE plus ZK if we could. Uh, but of course, it's like, you know, way, 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 way. Triple threat. In the future. So we'll see. <laughs> I guess, yeah. All the we'll... acronyms, MEV, ZK, Ooh. FHE. No one will know what we're talking about at all. <laughs> Very good. So maybe, I mean, what Tarun might be getting at as well is like, you could probably create systems now, right, which you, FHE is very limited in what it can do, 
right? And I guess the point is, you know, instead of creating complicated systems, which you can then just stick into a TE and then hope FHE gets good enough that you just port it over, right? You could imagine creating like fairly, you have to go pretty deep into the guts of these systems, right? And construct, you know, things that can be delegated, very small tasks that can be delegated to FHE, right? Just enough to give you privacy, but it requires rethinking what, you know, auctions or things like that. Like yeah, very, yeah. Me Mevim, level. Mevim or it doesn't look the same. AST changes. No, absolutely. I think, I think that's the right way of doing it. It's like, either you want to release something quick and then you, you wrap the whole thing in the TE or you, you manage to carve out like part of the protocol, part of the use cases, and you make it happen into, into an FHE circuit totally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. The last one that I had on my list, I know we, had, we have ZK MPC. But I don't know if we have, do we have any MPC experts here? That, like, there was a project, there was, like... There were a few. There yeah. was a few projects over the years. I, I actually don't know that combo, but I almost wonder, is that a similar thing where it's, like, a wrapper? No, that's more, can people who have parts of a secret generate a ZK proof together in a way that proves something about that secret that we all have, or, like, that we put together, but without ever revealing, revealing our shards of the secret. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so that's more in the weeds, or more yeah. Yeah. integrated, yeah. actually, as a architecture. I feel like this is like not, not ZK. It's, it's almost the other way of operation. It should be MPC ZK. Yeah, exactly. In that right. case, like the it's almost like the MPC that's a wrapper around ZK. Like you're doing oh. MPC over a ZK proof. Okay. But ZK like over as a ZK linguistic proofing. operator oh, yeah. seems oh, yeah. to only prefer prefix yeah, yeah. precedence. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, maybe MPC ZK is like oh. better way of thinking. Oh. oh, yeah. Wait, wait. You have to wait because this is <laughs> we need to get your audio. Is this uh, secret shared between all of the users? Uh, all of the uh, like so there are different models, yeah. One of them is uh, if I have a secret, but I don't have the capacity to prove anything about it, I'll secret share it, like I'll do shares of it, give one share to some cloud service, another share to another cloud service, and together they can sort of make a proof. Or like, I think each one of them makes their own proof, and at the end I combine the two proofs into one real proof about the secret I had. That's one model. The other model is... Um, I know part of a secret, Guillermo knows the other part, Taru knows the other part, but we don't want to reveal to each other what parts we know. But yet, the three of us want to prove something to Anna about the aggregate secret that we know. How do we do that? Right? Interesting. Yeah. And do we have some kind of uh, threshold cryptography uh, plus ZK? So, like, we all know uh, a, uh, a shared secret, and, like, uh, if uh, a bunch of us, like, gather together and create... A, so, so fact check me on this one, but I think the first model I discussed of um, secret shares, like one person knows a secret, produce secret shares and distributes them out. I think you can do like a two out of five thing and with only two people producing proofs for you, that's enough. Okay. Yeah. But you're also reducing your like sort of uh, trust budget where now if only two of these people collude, they'll find your full secret. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know any like names that I can search about? This EOS. Brand? EOS? EOS, okay. yeah, EOS. It's a paper. I know Patrice Misra is on it. I don't know who, I forgot who else is on it. This yeah. is Thank EOS, yeah. not to be mistaken for Brock Pierce's For baby. EOS, <laughs> the blockchain. Oh. When I saw that, I was like, EOS, odd yeah. naming. Which but. was presented at ZK Summit a while back, I think seven in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's when I was like, what is this? Yeah. Uh, there was a hand right there. Uh, I just want to make sure. You get a chance to say something. Um, to go back to MPC and ZK, I think we have it actually both ways because we have, on one hand, uh, as you say, you want to produce a proof and the witness is going to be private from different people and so they have to collaborate in creating this proof. I think there's a paper, I heard that there's a paper from Dan Bonnet uh, about this. But you also have MPC and ZK, which is we're going to use I, uh... MPC techniques to produce a ZK proof. And so it's reversed. Wait, and you can also use MPC? ZK as in subroutines for MPC protocols. Like there's there's a lot of crossover. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So okay. the crossovers are both ways. Both ways. But you just just to make sure I heard it, it was MPC in the head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like Nigel Smart. I think he was he part of that. He works on that. Yeah. Yeah. I had him on the show at the time. I think he was doing that. 
By the way, I any... say that for most things. Like <laughs> any topic we'll address in cryptography. Like, did fair, Nigel Smart ever look yeah, at this? Yeah, did Nigel Smart have something to do? At, at this point, what haven't you had? Is there something that's like the big gaping hole after like so many years that you're like, ah, oh, two hundred and I'm missing. I'm sure a lot. But come no, on, but is there something that comes to mind that's like, oh, this is the thing that's like? Well, all the pretty much like most of these crossover ones I have really? not talked about. So this is very interesting. I want to explore them. Um. Just so you know, any, any, and this is also to the audience potentially listening later, anything we're mentioning here, we'll add, we will have show notes. We'll be able to put links to the previous episodes and everything. So we'll try to dig those up. ZK DeFi. It's not really a, the same kind of acronym. You said there's a lot. Yeah, I think there is stuff. I think the main thing you have to remember is that like the ZK is not a panacea. So there was like, I think 2020, 2021. There were just like so many of these teams that are like, oh, we're doing ZK Uniswap, and they like did it mindlessly <laughs> without thinking. And then you know we wrote a bunch of papers that show when that doesn't work, and you can only kind of. I get mean, different Anna's acknowledged on them actually because yeah, you were yeah. the Yay. reason why we wrote the paper. Yeah, really. so nice. But, but we've <laughs> evolved since then. I think pe- people have kind of realized like, oh, I can't just like throw ZK and like hope that people won't pay attention because mm-hmm. um, people do care about the privacy aspects in DeFi quite a bit actually um i think some of the things are like auctions so like designs for particular types of mev auctions that use zk and that's maybe closer to 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 that type of stuff Um, but i think there's also a lot of stuff on cross-chain DeFi for proving properties about collateral on another chain such that you can use it locally and that is actually sort of like a a weaker form of a bridge Uh, so there's definitely a lot of stuff in that vein i think a lot of it is just, uh, you know, kind of slowly being built up right now. I think in the layer two world where there's like many rollups with these kind of somewhat shared sequencing aspects, um, a lot of the, the partial atomicity guarantees are coming from ZK. And so that, but it, 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 it's, it's more like evolutionary rather than revolutionary to DeFi. I just remember that work and even that show, we did this show, I think, where we talked oh, yeah. about it. It was such a sanity check at the time to the kinds of claims being made. Like there were so many like private decks, private decks, <laughs> and like all immense different things to different people. I remember your work really was like a a little bit of like a, a lightning, like, <laughs> hey, let's wake like let's get out of this weird stupor we're in. Let's be realistic. This is not yeah. some of those claims are not possible. I think it shifted people who were in that to like take it into account, change direction, be a little bit smarter. It really, I, I remember that feeling of like, and the teams <laughs> responded. Yeah, uh, not, not some, some teams not so kindly, but um, yeah. yeah, I've got some. There were some emails. emails. <laughs> um, but but I, I think the, the cross-chain stuff is way, way more of the. And that's the, now though, right? Now. That's, and this is kind of re- referring to your talk where it's like intense and you start to like. I, on that vein, I actually think one of the interesting things that hasn't really happened a lot is, you know, um, we're preoccupied a lot with what's possible, right? Like, a lot of ZK is like, okay, what, what can we do with this? Um, and I think one of the things that I haven't seen a lot in the field is actually impossibility results. Like, what things can't, like, if you only have ZK and you don't have any other guarantees, what can't you do? Right? Like, in some sense, there is a bunch of questions, like, I mean, one of them happens to be privacy indexes is really not achievable with just ZK. You have to actually get smart about how you do a bunch of these things. Um, but, but more broadly, right, you could imagine that, that there's a lot of these crossovers that actually don't make sense. You know, one exa- I don't think this is true, but one example is like, you know, maybe there really isn't like a panacea for ZKML. And it requires a lot of communication to actually get things done. And that places a bound on how well you're likely to do, right, how fast you can run a given model or something of the like. So I, I, it's kind of interesting. Like, I mean, I, I guess uh, that this gets us is like, I, I think there is a place right now for kind of the, the more negative work that outlines what the boundaries of what we can do are in ZK and then what we actually need to enable thing like further applications. You know, I feel like we're getting close to the edge of what's possible, but it's still very fuzzy, you know, in, in both theoretical sense and the practical one. I think, I mean, I have one last topic that I wanted to cover, which is a little bit about like the trajectory of ZK and where we are. <laughs> this is, you know, the name of this was State of ZK. Um, as a project, I mean, so ZK Summit 1 was in 2018, beginning of tw- like early 2018. 
I think that was around the same time we named the show Zero Knowledge. And it went, I, like, I remember the first summit was 100 people, 110 people. The second summit was packed. People were very excited. And then it went down again, <laughs> which is, like, a lot of fun as an event planner. Um, and then it sort of slowly, slowly meandered along, got a little bit bigger. And then in the last two years... Especially, I mean, you can see it in the events. The events is like one metric. You don't all see this, but I can see it in the show. Like the listen, you know, the, the download count on the show. You see these like spikes. But yeah, like I, I mean, I have a sense a little bit for like at least the metrics that I have access to. But where are we on that ZK scale? Like, have we just gone through almost a delayed ZK bull market? Just so you know this, like, as the crypto market crashed, ZK took off. It was very strange. Like, my metrics went up when everyone went down. <laughs> and I was like, we're defying gravity, people. <laughs> this is amazing. But, yeah, like, and I will say this, you know, ZK, ZK 10, we've made it to 10. But I will say, like, currently on our metrics, it's sort of leveled. It's not, we're not getting the big swoops up anymore. And I'm, I'm totally cool with that. I find those swoops kind of scary. They weird me out a little bit. I like slow and steady. That's my way. <laughs> but I'm just curious what you guys think about that. Like, think, from where you're sitting, is ZK hmm. so the up? Before we get to that, I actually want to say, like, it is insane. And Alex, Tarun, and I were just talking about this, which is, you said the first ZK event, the first ZK event was in March of 2018. We were just talking about the fact that, like, what existed in 2018? Zcash. MakerDAO. It, well, yeah, right. But like, okay, <laughs> is that ZK now? Like, uh, no, 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 are you I'm, doing I'm uh, saying like that? That, that was, existed. The fact that that was the only thing that existed. Exactly. Like, right. It's Zcash and. But it was Zcash and a lot of like and research groups and universities at the time. Berkeley. Right. Like, Ale I don't even know if Alessandro had already started his, but there were some Berkeley people. No, he probably had. And Dan Bonet's group. And I'm sure. And I'm sure there were others. For sure, like Ellie, I'm the sure. Fry, Fry paper was around then, right? Yeah, yeah. twenty, yeah, it was but, but it was tiny, and also we weren't on the map, so like, I, I was kind of lucky that ZK researchers even learned about it. It was, mm. it was. So yeah, this is what I'm getting. At. I was like, how did you have like the like big brain vision to be like, ah, yes, ZK is the thing that will like I've told be this big. Story. You know this story. Well, I don't know. I, maybe I know this I'm story. I'm sure you all know this story. So the Do you know the story? Does anyone know the story? The podcast okay. for the first... Okay, we're going to do a little history. Of, <laughs> the podcast for the... You can all listen to it. <laughs> don't. The first 11 episodes are terrible. <laughs> but if you go back to the beginning of Zero Knowledge Podcast, we had no name. We were this podcast. Welcome to... I think that's what Frederick would say, like, this podcast. My old <laughs> co-host. And then... Around episode 11, I think it's around there, we're like, we have a name. We're the Zero Knowledge Podcast. <laughs> because, and I don't know if we said it, but we were thinking it, because we have zero knowledge. <laughs> not, not the cryptography. And Zeke, <laughs> this is the truth. <laughs> this is how this happened. Non-technical, <laughs> not math person in this position. And then I had just like, Want, I mean, so I had a startup before, a SaaS-based startup, by the way, which is where my disdain comes from. But, um, yeah, like, I had done events. I think we had thrown parties with my old uh, company. And I knew that they were just cool. They were, like, fun to do. And I wanted to do an event around the podcast. So Something Something Summit became, insert name of... <laughs> show <laughs> placeholder zero knowledge summit incredible. that is how this event started incredible and we had named it by then we i mean i had i think i had met zuko too and i was like trying to get him on the show and i was trying to definitely like get zero knowledge people to come and i like i was you know we we did know what it was we weren't completely pulling it out of the air like I was working at the time in an engineering team we knew that zkps existed but they were still pretty far away from us um, but yeah, and that's how the first summit came to be. And actually what happened is we sent out the invite for it. The, uh, you know, I think it was still application only at the time it was kind of the, the crypto bull market. So it was more just cause there's, you know, could have been a lot of random people coming <laughs> who wouldn't have been very technical, 
But someone passed it over. I think it was Howard Wu got it. And he was like, I want to apply to the ZK pod, the ZK summit. And I'm going to bring like eight of my cryptography friends who do ZK. And at the same time, Zuko was like, we have someone on our team who's up for coming, Strad, who's here actually today. Um, And then Strad, yeah, and Strad came. And so we had those two kind of people. Strad started it off. He was the first talk. Howard was the second, as far as I remember. And then there was a few others. And then we, and, but the event was also a lot of just like ran, random blockchain who was local. We were in Berlin. But yeah, that's how that started. Wow. And then every summit after that became more ZK, less other until, I mean, ZK4 was all ZK. Oh, no, no, actually, no, not fully. Like maybe like 90% ZK. But it was like getting there. That's the story. Wow. Sorry, that was like a lot of story time. No, that was and great. actually, the audience of this show, like the audience, like I have told this story on the show before. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard the story, yeah, or yeah. I mean, not on the show at least. Yeah. But does that destroy the magic for everyone? <laughs> Fake it till you make it is a well-trodden tradition in this industry. Just look at Tether. Have I ever really faked it though? I don't think I've ever pretended to be like good at this. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, so I didn't mean to derail too too far. I, Sorry, but I, I'm like. It's Where is ZK at? Story. This is yes. the question. What is the trajectory of ZK now? And sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. you were like, going, so. so the metric I have is sort of research and the pace at which it's coming out. And also I have a very like short time frame that I'm looking at because I joined very recently. But it still feels like it's super fast and it's probably going getting faster. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, like speed. Lots of speed. Still lots of energy and on that trajectory. Yeah. All the papers that were started in the bull market are being ri- finished exactly. now. <laughs> They're being edited as we speak and coming out of the oven. Um, I, I, yeah, I think we've... Maybe you think is the wrong term. I hope we've hit like a bit of an apex. right? It, it seems like the more normie channels, so to speak, have, have stopped like raving about ZK, and now we're kind of left with... Um, more, more slow, maybe more deliberate work. I, I, don't, I wouldn't call research slow or deliberate in any way, but, but it's the closest thing that we have. Mm. So I think it feels like that's kind of continuing on. Um, but I feel like the, the frenzy of getting in now and doing ZK as quickly yeah. as possible, I feel like, has slowed. And that, that, that feels very good in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, it sounds know? like kind of quality. Yeah, in, 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 yeah exactly. In some as sense, you right say that, that's what I'm thinking is like right. quality is there. Yeah. Um, I think I agree with both those points, but I'll give maybe the the unfortunate capitalism point, which is that <laughs> I will say investments in ZK seem to be down quite a bit. Yeah. So if you're trying to raise a ZK fund, you might have missed the boat because like, I think <laughs> like six months ago would have been the ideal time. Not not that I'm not trying to be the Debbie Downer. Okay, <laughs> like I'm just trying to say the facts. Uh, so I believe we are actually getting. We're getting the, what, 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 what's that stick? The cane? The thing that pulls you off stage? Oh. What are, they, what are those called? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, what are they actually called? The cane. I think it's a cane, yeah. When they just like the pull like you out. hooked cane that pulls you yep, off the stage right. in those cartoons from the 20s. <laughs> Whatever that is, we're getting it. Um, I've been told now multiple times I, we, I, we need to wrap it up. So I want to thank you all for listening to this panel, for can we can we end with each person on stage giving their prediction for what will happen oh, in ZK no. land in twenty twenty four? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Before I close, okay, let's do it real. We have to be quick though. I am getting the signals. Okay, what's twenty twenty four? I predict we will have our first application, and it will not look like anything talked about here, um, but it will probably be used in a way that probably discusses the purity of people working on the proving systems. <laughs> Debbie uh, Downer. Because gamblers <laughs> always find a way. Uh, you think it's going to be gambling? I think there's going to be it's going to be some type of speculatory gamble. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a real prediction. I mean, I I think like we're just going to see like more of the culmination of the current wave of of research actually becoming more real, but I, I don't know if I have a prediction for what that means like, you know, kind of at, a, at an animal level, like at the base of your stem level, you know, like I, I just, it's kind of like, oh, cool, continuous. Um, I think we'll probably see client-side proofs that are fast enough to not be too annoying. Like, 
fast enough to be almost usable. Almost. <laughs> That's okay, I I I, I don't think I even have time to think of one. I'm actually yeah. getting signals <laughs> from people that like I think they're holding the door closed so we don't get actually thrown out. All right, thank you so much to the panelists. Thank, thank you, you so much to this audience and the questions okay. you just gave us. Thanks for uh, having a live ZK podcast episode with us. I this is like first, kind of right? what it's like. Um, and obviously, thank you so much for coming to the Zero Knowledge Summit Ten. Thank you again to this team for putting it on. Really. And there's Agni. Say thank you to her. Say thank you to everyone here, but especially Agni. Yeah. And uh, I think I'm supposed to say something. Thank you to the podcast team. <laughs> <laughs> and to our listeners, thanks for listening. There we go. Do-do, 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 do-do.